So in this experiment, you're going to be working with a simulation again, but as before, it's nice to have an idea of what you're doing in the real world. So if you have a magnifying glass at home, go and grab it because I want to show you something with it. So you can probably tell from the reflections in my magnifying glass that I live near apartment buildings. So there's a patch of sky out there and some apartment buildings down at the bottom. If I move my magnifying glass back and forth, I can get a focused image of those apartment buildings on the wall. So the image is upside down, the sky is down here, and the apartment buildings are here. And I can actually see windows on the apartment buildings, you probably can't in the video, but you can get a nice sharply focused image of whatever's outside your window on the wall with just a magnifying glass. Now because the buildings are so far away compared to the size of the lens itself, this image focuses at the focal length of the lens. So that's a way to measure the focal length of a lens, is you can move it back and forth, and when you get a focused image, you grab a ruler and you measure the distance from the center of the lens over to the image on the wall when it's in focus, and that's the focal length of your lens. So you're going to be doing this in the simulation. You'll move a lens back and forth, get a focused image on a screen, and then you'll record what the focal length of that lens is. And then we're going to use that later when you build telescopes in the simulation out of those lenses. Now, if you have two magnifying glasses at home, you can build a telescope out of these. And if you don't have two magnifying glasses, but you've got one, you can also substitute in non-prescription reading glasses for the second lens. So if you can steal your grandma's reading glasses that she bought from the pharmacy, those will work too. So you want two converging lenses, and we're going to build a telescope out of these. So this is a little tricky, so bear with me, but I'm going to take the magnifying glass that has the shorter focal length, and I'm going to put it close to our eyeball, and then I'm going to take the other lens and put it farther away. And you can see something through there. So you can see buildings, and they're in focus upside down. And we are actually looking at those distant buildings over there. So you can clearly see that they're magnified through our telescope. So you're going to be playing around with this in the simulation. You're going to see how far apart the two lenses have to be in order to see a focused image and what magnification you're able to get with those two lenses. So here's the simulation and you've got a lens that you can drag around and a screen that you can also drag around. Now what you're going to be doing is dragging the lens until you see a nice sharply focused image on your screen and then you want to measure the distance between the lens and the screen. So it's always going to be the bigger position minus the smaller position. So do yourself a favor, take your screen, put it right at zero, and then one value minus the other is always going to be, say, 12 centimeters minus zero. So it becomes 12 centimeters. It just makes the math easier to do that. So again, I need to move this lens back and forth until I get a nice sharply focused image on the screen. And of course, we're not seeing anything on this screen. That's actually because the image is really tiny. So down here in this 20 times magnified view, this is where you want to be watching for your image of the moon. So I move it back and forth, and eventually I get a little tiny image of the moon in focus. So once I've got that, then I can look at the position of my lens, subtract off the position of the screen, which I set to zero to make the math easy, and now I've got the focal length of lens A. Then I'd go up here to the corner, and I turn off lens A, turn on lens B, and I do it for this lens also. So I move it back and forth, until I see a nice sharply focused image of the moon on my 20 times magnification screen here. And this one's big enough you actually can see a little tiny image of the moon here on the screen also. So you'll do this for all four lenses. So you just turn on one lens at a time and just keep moving back and forth until you get a nice sharply focused image of the moon on the screen. And then you record your focal length. That's all you need to do for part A. In part B of the experiment, you're gonna be building telescopes out of these lenses. So let me go back to lenses A and B here. And of course, with a telescope, you don't have a screen over here that you're casting the image onto. You can, but generally speaking, you're looking through the lenses with your eyeball. So come up here to the corner again and turn off the image screen. So you click that, turn it off, the image screen has disappeared, and an eyeball has appeared over here. So now, down here, the 20 times magnification screen has been replaced by the eye telescope view. So this is what the eyeball is seeing through the telescope lenses. So I recommend, again, that you put your eyepiece lens right at the end of the track, right at zero centimeters, and then you move the other lens, the objective lens, back and forth until you get a nice, sharply focused image of the moon as seen through the telescope. Now for the experiment, you're going to be theoretically predicting what the length of the telescope is supposed to be based on the focal lengths of the lenses that you measured in part A. 
and then you'll compare that theoretical length of the telescope to the value you actually measure off the track. In other words, how far apart are your two lenses when the image is in focus? So you can read that directly off the track and then compare that to the theoretical length of the telescope that you calculated using the focal lengths. You're also going to want to measure the magnification of your telescope. So how do you do that? Well, first you turn off the two lenses. And that means down here in the eye telescope view, you're just seeing the unmagnified moon. So it looks exactly the same size as it does over here in the window. But this view has grid lines on it. So you measure the diameter of the moon using the grid lines. And by the way, the grid lines are 0.5 degrees of angular separation apart. So you measure the size of the moon. Then you turn on your two lenses again for your telescope and you measure the size of the moon again when it's sharply focused. And then the magnified size of the moon divided by the unmagnified size of the moon gives you the magnification of your telescope. The lab manual shows you the exact equations for this. And of course, if you use a different set of lenses, then you should get the image focused in a different location and see a different magnification of the moon. So you're gonna be looking at two different telescopes as part of this experiment. Now these are refracting telescopes because light refracts through glass and these are lenses. Part C of the experiment, you're gonna be looking at a reflecting telescope, which uses a mirror. Again, it'll be a simulation and you're actually gonna use a different simulation than this one. Okay, so this is a typical refracting telescope, meaning that it has two lenses in it and the lenses are made out of glass and glass refracts light. So it's a refracting telescope. So over here in one end, you've got the objective lens, which I don't know if you can tell that that's glass in there, but it's got a big glass lens at the end, the objective lens. And at the other end, it also has an eyepiece lens. So this is just like the telescope that you built in the simulator. It's got two lenses. As I said, this is called a refracting telescope, but there's also reflecting telescopes. They still have an eyepiece lens, but instead of having an objective lens, they have an objective mirror, a curved mirror that focuses the light. So let me show you what a typical reflecting telescope looks like now. So this is what a typical reflecting telescope looks like. Wow, it's really big. So it's a big red tube in this case, and you will notice that there is this eyepiece here. So this is where you would look to see an image of whatever it is that you're looking at. Now, if we look down the end of the barrel here, you're gonna see a really big mirror down there at the bottom of the tube. That's the objective mirror, and it bounces the light back up towards us, but it's also focusing it. And here we have a secondary mirror. So the secondary mirror takes the light and bounces it sideways. So the primary mirror at the bottom reflects the light back up here, focusing it, and the secondary mirror sends the light sideways to the eyepiece so that you can see all the light that you're gathered from whatever it is that you were looking at. And as I said, these are called reflecting telescopes. They're often nicknamed a light bucket because it's just a big bucket to catch light and then you focus it through an eyepiece. So here's the simulation that we use in part C of the experiment. So again, we've got the moon over here shining in the window. The light comes down, it hits a primary mirror here, and that reflects the light back towards the moon, but it's beginning to focus it. And then there's a secondary mirror here that catches the light and reflects it down the eyepiece tube. And then it goes through the eyepiece lens and then to your eyeball. Now these eyepiece lenses in the simulation, you can grab them and drag them back and forth to get a nicely focused image of the moon. And there are three different eyepieces, so let me switch to a different one here. And again, get a nice sharply focused image of the moon. Now the lab manual is gonna ask you some questions about the telescope, and then you're going to actually measure things on the moon. So you're gonna measure two features of the moon. One of them will be one of these mare, one of the big dark areas on the moon. You'll measure how big that is, and then calculate how big it is in kilometers. And then you'll do it again for a crater. So you'll measure one of the craters on the image and then figure out how big that is in kilometers on the moon. So even though this is a simulation for part C of the experiment, you are going to be taking some measurements of actual features on the moon.